Myself, Dr. Shemmi PM, Assistant Professor, Department of Electronics, MES College, Marambali. Welcome to my session on Logic Families. This is basically focusing on BSc Second Semester BSc Electronics program for the course Digital Electronics. So, in this, I'll be discussing uh, the introduction to Logic Families, followed by Transistor Transistor Logic its function as inverter, NAND gate, TTL features and subfamilies. Before going to logic families, let us see what integrated circuit is. Integrated circuits are chips, pieces of semiconductor material that contain transistors, resistors and capacitors necessary to create a digital circuit or system. The first IC was fabricated by Jack Kilby of Texas Instrument using germanium BJT in 1958 for which he won the Nobel Prize in 2000. The first silicon IC was introduced by Robert no Noyce of Fairchild Semiconductor in 1959. ICs are classified based on the complexity of the circuit that is based on the number of gates included in a chip. The ICs are classified into small scale integration medium scale integration, large scale integration, very large scale integration and ultra large scale integration. In small scale integration, the number of gates included in chip is less than 12. In medium scale, uh, the number of gates included in chip is less than 100. In LSI, the number of gates varies between 100 and 1K. In VLSI, the number of gates included in a chip varies from 1K to 10K and in ultra large scale integration the number of gates included in a chip varies from 10K to 100K. Normally IC logic gates come under small scale integration, digital combinational logic circuits fall, fall under medium scale integration, microprocessor systems comes under LSI and VLSI. Then coming to logic families, a logic family is a collection of different integrated circuit chips that have similar input, output and internal circuit characteristics, but they perform different logic gate functions such as AND, OR, NODE, etc. The set of digital ICs belonging to the same logic family are electrically compatible with each other. Now let us see the characteristics of logic families. The main characteristics of logic families include speed of operation, noise immunity, fan in, fan out and power dissipation. Let us see each in detail. Speed or propagation delay. Speed of a logic circuit is determined by the time between the application of the input and change in the output of the circuit. It is normally specified in terms of propagation delay time TPD. The propagation delay is the average transition delay time for the signal to propagate from input to output and it is normally measured in nanoseconds. Coming to noise immunity, as you all know noise is present in all real system which adds random fluctuations to voltages representing logic levels. The maximum noise that a circuit can withstand without affecting the output is termed as noise immunity. A quantitative measure of noise immunity is denoted as noise margin. Coming to fan in, fan in is defined as the maximum number of inputs that a logic gate can accept. It is specified by the manufacturer and is provided in the data sheet. If the number of input exceeds the specified limit, the output will be undefined or incorrect. In the figure, the number of inputs connected to the gate is M, so that its fan is M. Fan out determines the number of circuit that the gate can drive. Here also the fan out is specified by the manufacturer and is provided in the data sheet. Exceeding the specified maximum load may cause a sub malfunction 
because the circuit will not be able to supply the demand, demanded power. So, in the, in the figure, an AND gate, NOT gate is connected to 5 NOT gates, that is 5 inverters are connected to the inverter. So, its fan out is 5. Coming to power dissipation, when a circuit switches from one state to other, other power dissipates. The power dissipation is defined as the power needed by the logic circuit. Then types of logic families. Logic families are classified broadly according to the technologies they are built with. The most widely used logic families are transistor-transistor logic, emitter-coupled logic ECL, complementary metal oxide semiconductor CMOS. Transistor TTL and ACL are based on bipolar junction transistors or BJTs. Complementary metal oxide semiconductor are based on metal oxide semiconductor field effect transvis, transistor that is MOSFETs. Within each family, several subfamilies are available and they vary by speed, power conception, course, voltage and current levels. So, I will be discussing uh, more on transistor-transistor logic. Its operation as inverter, NAND gate, its voltage transfer characteristics, uh, subfamilies and its features. So, transistor-transistor logic was first introduced by Texas Instruments in 1964. It is a class of digital circuits built from bipolar junction transistors and resistors. And this is one of the most widely used families for SSI and MSI devices which is ra rarely used for VLSI. Typically, it is operated from 5 volt supply. It is called transistor-transistor logic because both the ga logic gating function and the amplifying function are performed by transistors. This figure shows a basic inverter circuit, transistor working as an inverter. When Vn is equal to 5 volt, which is equivalent to logic 1, the transistor is turned on and V out equals 0 that is correspond to logic 0. Similarly, when Vn is equal to 0 volt that is logic 0, the transistor is turned off and V out equals high that is plus 5 volt that is logic 1. And this is satisfied under the assumption that the load resistance is greater than RC. Here V out is given by V out is equal to Vcc into RL divided by RL plus RC according to voltage divider rule. Here we need a large RC when transistor is on and a small RC when transistor is off. So, the idea of variable RC is accommodated by TTL IC and is explained in the next slide. So, this is the circuit diagram of TTL inverter with totem pole arrangement where the idea of variable RC is accommodated. It uses another transistor Q3 in place of RC to act like a varying resistance. Q3 is cut off that is acts like a high RC when output transistor Q4 is saturated and Q3 is on acts like a low RC when Q4 is cut off. Thus, one transistor is on at a time. The combination of Q3 and Q4 is called totem pole arrangement. Q1 is called the input transistor which can be multi emitter transistor. Uh, for working as inverter only one emitter is needed because inverter has only one input and one output. Q1 drives Q2 which controls Q3 and Q4. Diode D1 is used to protect Q1 from unwanted negative voltages and diode D2 ensures that when Q1 is, Q4 is on, Q3 is off and when Q4 is off, Q3 is on. So, when input is low, the base emitter junction of Q1 is forward bias, transistor Q1 is on, transistor Q2 is off, which switch on transistor Q3, diode is on, Q4 is off and output will be high. When input is high, the base emitter junction is uh, reverse bias, transistor Q1 is off, Q2 is on, Q3 is off, diode is off, Q4 is on and the output will be low. That is for low input output will be high and for high input output will be low and the transistor and the invert this function as inverter. Coming to the transfer characteristics of TTL inverter, transfer characteristics is nothing but the 
input voltage versus output voltage characteristics it is how the input voltage or how the circuit respond to changes in input voltage a figure shows the ideal inverter characteristics were when input is zero output is high that is 5 volt when input is 5 volt the output is zero and figure shows the ttl inverter and uh, the practical transfer characteristics when the input is low the current i goes out of the emitter of transistor q1 q2 and q4 get no base current and are off so the output is high and it corresponds to point a when the input increases some of the current gets directed into the base of q2 so it comes on in the active mode corresponds to point b collector current of q2 increases so ir drop across r1 increases and output voltage drops from points b to c as q2 is on it provides a base current for q4 and q4 comes on to active mode that is point c when the input further increases more of the current gets directed to the base of transistor q2 so it moves into saturation mode that is c to d q2 provides a base current to q4 and q4 moves into saturation mode that is d further increase in input directs all current i to the collector of q2 q1 so q2 gets more current moves deeper into saturation mode that corresponds to points d to e similarly q4 moves deeper into saturation mode e this is the function of nand gate uh, ttl logic family as nand gate uh, the two table of nand gate is shown here a low at the input of the nand gate drives its output to high and when both inputs are high output will be zero that is a truth table so here the first diagram when one or both inputs are low connect to the ground the base emitter junction of q1 is forward bias that means q1 is on q2 is off q3 is on diode is on q4 is off and the output will be output of the output transistor will be high and when both inputs are high base emitter junction of uh, q1 is reverse bias so that q1 is off which drives q2 to on q3 is off diode is off q4 is on so that the output voltage is low so a high bo when both inputs are high output will be low and when any of the inputs are uh, low output will be high thus it function as a nand gate coming to features of ttl logic family it works with a low the logic low level it's 0 or 0 0.2 volt logic high level is plus 5 volt fan out is 10 power is 10 milliwatt propagation delay is 9 nanosecond noise margin is about 0.4 volt then coming to ttl family there are two series TTL 5400 and 7400 series are the most popular and commonly used series. 7400 uh, devices are used for commercial applications, whereas 5400 devices are used for military applications. The difference in two series are in the temperature and power supply ranges. The temperature range for 7400 series is uh, between 0 degree and 70 degree Celsius and that for 5400 series is between minus 55 degree to 125 degree Celsius. The supply voltage range is 5 plus or minus 0.25 volt for 7400 series and 5 plus or minus 0.5 volt for 5400 series. Next is TTL subfamilies. There are several subfamilies or series of TTL technologies such as standard TTL, low power, high speed TTL, shocky TTL, low power shocky, advanced shocky, advanced low power shocky TTL. So this is the uh, detailed description of the TTL subfamilies. They are defined in terms of speed and power. The standard TTL power dissipation is 10 milliwatt, propagation delay is 9 nanoseconds, which is no longer a reasonable choice for new designs. Then 74L series, which is low power TTL which has a uh, power of 1 milliwatts, longer propagation delay or uh, low speed of 33 nanoseconds, which is followed by 74H, that is high speed TTL, which is having a power of uh, speed of 6 nanoseconds and uh, takes higher power of 23 milliwatts.
then uh, coming to Shockey TTL 74S series uses Shockey clamp transistors that prevent the transistor in the configuration to go to saturation and thereby reduce the propagation delay by 4 and increase the power consumption by only 2. And this is followed by Lopper Shockey TTL with uh, lower power of 2 milliwatts and slower speed of 9.5 nanoseconds. Followed by advanced TTL, which is a faster TTL series, which is having a, a power, um, speed of 1.7 nanosecond, and that is followed by advanced lower shocky TTL, which is having lowest gate power dissipation of 1.2 milliwatts and lowest speed power product. And this table shows the comparison of TTL subfamilies in terms of fan out, power dissipation, propagation delay, and speed power product in pico joules. Thank you.